Street smarts, no nos. Don't mix up your music. What musical instrument does a cellist play? Piano. Don't flunk your fairy tales. Name any two of Snow White's seven dwarfs. Uh, Humpty and Sleepy. Never betray a bride. Who is Matthew Broderick's famous wife? Annie McDowell. Sandra Bullock. Sarah Jessica Parker. He, she's married. Street smarts. Think you've got them? Find out now. Tell. And if I'm known for anything, it's my generosity. I'm so generous, I spend all my free time traveling around the country giving people questions, just giving them away. And all I ask for in return is that people give me answers so I can come back here and see which of our in-studio contestants can predict who out there had plenty of smarts to spare and who was only generous with the wrong answers. So let's give our contestants a big welcome. Hello, Cheryl, how pretty. Looking lovely. And Keith right there. Now, as generous as I am, there's only one cash prize, so that means only one of you will scream with glee, the other will have to buy, bow your head in defeat. Sorry. Now, let's meet our three beautiful brains on the screens. First up, Deborah shows us why she's perfect for street smarts. So, Deborah, where are you from? What do you do? I am from Portland, Oregon, and I am in sales, advertising. Advertising sales? Yes. So, you watch TV a lot? You watch street smarts? I do, I do, I watch it. Okay, so you know there's two people right now in the studio. They want to know about, uh, stuff about you. What can you tell Choose them? Me. Oh, okay. Choose me! Choose me, okay? Because I know all the answers, okay? okay? All right. So, bet on me, big money. If they make a movie about your life, who plays you in the movie? Oh. Absolutely, that would be either, let's see, Madonna, Selma Hayek. <laughs> okay, and Will advise us on when to leave sexy phone messages. Hint, make sure your mom's not home. Now, Will, uh, how tall are you? I'm a 6'4". Right, that's weird, because, I mean, TV makes it look weird. I'm 6'1". Even. 6'1", even what? <laughs> so, Will, tell me about this time you were leaving a message for your girlfriend on her, on her machine. And your mom picked up while you were leaving the message. I'm trying to be smooth. I'm like, yeah, baby, uh, yeah, so I'm thinking about you, and what are you doing right now? I'm like, boy, if you don't get out the phone, you're going to get a whooping up. I'm like, mom, I'm on the phone. I'm like, what, do you want something too? Right now? And then she got that message. Yeah, she broke up with me. Oh, no. I love you. Uh, finally, Wes reminisces about his days in the Navy. So, Wes, where are you from? Oh, I'm from California. And what do you do? Oh, it, not a hell of a lot. I sit around and talk to people. And, well, that's, good. that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. So, Wes, you were in the Navy. Yes, I you was. You enlisted in 1947. Yes. Well, what's your craziest story about being in the Navy? The week I spent in, in Peiping, which is today called Beijing, there were four of us off the ship, two officers, both 22 years old, uh, my buddy at 19 and me at 18, and the four of us ran all over Peiping, China, with a pocket full of money, and you cannot believe the fun we had. <laughs> I, have, I have an idea. Yeah. All right, Wes, thank you, sir. All right, first up, let's see who knew it. That's how it works. I have to the same question. You must guess who got it right. Lock in your choice. A correct guess earns you $100, all right? Yes, Here sir. we go, guys. First question I asked to Deborah, Will, and Wes. What is a mint julep? What is a mint julep? Who got it right? What do you think, guys? Who knew it up there? So lock in whenever you guys can. And you guys both locked in here. Let's see, you think Wes knows, huh, Keith? Yes. Yeah, why is he going He has know? to know, because he's from California. He looked like a swinger, baby! <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> What is a mint julep? Mint julep. Uh, that's a Kentucky drink of uh, bourbon and something else and mint. That's right, they drink it for what event? What event is a tradition to drink? Whatever they need it for. Oh, that Kentucky Derby. That's <laughs> the big drink. Yeah. Way to go, Keith! That's 100 bucks for you! Nice job, buddy! Cheryl, you went with Deborah. I don't think she knew it, but I want to see what she said. What is a mint julep? Food. It's some sort of food. Actually, I thought you, you, you would get this one. It's alcohol. It's a drink. <laughs> they get the Kentucky Derby of it. Bitter alcohol food. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, I'm sorry, she Cheryl. Has to know. No, she, she didn't like she's know. Drunk. You think, oh, she drunk. All right, here's the next question, guys. What reality show was hosted by News Radio's Joe Rogan? What do you think? Which one of these guys knew it? Deborah, Will, or Wes could tell me what reality show Joe Rogan's hosting now. So, lock in when you think you know, okay. You think Will knows, huh, Cheryl? Yeah, you know, he's a fast talker. Hopefully he's a fast thinker. He'll know what's going on. Okay, let's take a look, see if we can type the game. What reality show is hosted by News Radio's Joe Rogan? The real world. The real world? <laughs> no, that's a wrong answer, Cheryl. I'm sorry. Now, Keith, you think Wes is going to come through again he's for you? He's got to know it. He looks like a Joe Rogan. Okay. <laughs> okay. What reality show is hosted by News Radio's Joe Rogan? 
Uh, temptation, too. Temptation, too. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's a wrong answer, Keith West didn't know that. Deborah had the right answer. Here it is for everyone. What reality show is hosted by News Radio's Joe Rogan? I know, oh, oh. Fear Factor, I oh. did that yesterday. I played it in my mind. We went to Raging Rapids and I went on this thing that was 17 stories high. So all I said in my mind is I said, I'm on Fear Factor, I'm on Fear Factor. <laughs> that was the right answer, Deborah. Good show, good host. All right, here's the last question around, guys. The dish known as jerk chicken originated in what island nation? So who knew it up there? Do you think it was Deborah Willer West could tell me that answer? Try to get you guys some money before the end of the round here, and you're both locked in. You both think Will. Keith, he'll know this one? He has to. He looks like a hearty eater. Okay. And I know I am, baby. Like <laughs> okay. it. Jerk all the, time. the dish known as jerk chicken originated in what island nation? To jerk. <laughs> uh, Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah! 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 Keith is up to 200 bucks, and just for fun, let's see what crazy Deborah down here says. The dish known as jerk chicken originated in what island nation? Um, that would be Indonesia. Indonesia? What is jerk chicken? That's uh, where they have to take the chicken and they have to kind of jerk the uh, meat off the bone. Okay. All right, thank you, Deborah. Let's recap the score. Shell, you have $100. Not bad, huh? But yeah. Keith's got 200 bucks. According to the saying, what imitates art? Life. Music. Life. Life. Life imitates art. Art. How does life imitate art in your world? Dancing. Go, Will. Go. That's life. America. Let's meet our in-studio contestants. Now we have the lovely Cheryl here. Cheryl's from uh, Granada Hills, California, sales rep, and you love to travel. Tell me a story. Yes, I do. One time I got stranded in Romania when Eesh. I was traveling around Europe. I had lost most of my money and my bus ticket back to Hungary. But luckily I met this Romanian-American guy at the U.S. Embassy who was my savior. Nice. He, uh, he drove me all the way back to oh, Hungary good. So take rides from strangers. Over. Nice. All right, Cheryl. Hey, it works in Europe. Okay, in Europe. All right, we got Keith from Compton, California. He's a commercial driver. And you sang the national anthem at a Padres game? Yeah, I had the great opportunity to sing the national anthem at the Padres right. game. But in the middle of the song, I forgot the words. So I began to repeat it and hum, and then ran off the field before the end of the song. Oh, and man. Embarrassed. That's what Roseanne did, too. Remember that a while back? Uh, that's yeah. my sister. That's your sister? Yeah. Oh, OK. You guys look brother family. All right. Let's recap the score. Cheryl's got 100 bucks. Keith's got 200 bucks. There's an abundance of wrong answers that will blow your mind in who blew it. I have the same question only two at a time. You guys have to figure out who got it wrong. Lock in your choice. A correct guess earns you $200. Plus, there's the dunce cap. It's just brought in. You can only use it once this round. When you think your opponent doesn't know an answer, buzz in and dunce them. If they're wrong, you get the 200 bucks. If they're right, they get the 200 bucks. The cap can get worked up as an old lady whose jello won't set, so watch out. All right. All now, here's right. the first question I asked both Deborah and Wes. What band postponed their 2001 summer tour because member AJ McLean went into rehab? So, oh, Keith, you've been done. Throw that cap up there, Shari. Right, Keith, I'm gonna read the question again. You have five seconds to answer, $200 uh, at stake. What band postponed their 2001 summer tour because member AJ McLean went into rehab? Was it The Who? No, that's not the right answer, Keith. Cheryl gets the 200 bucks and takes the lead, nice job. All right, now who do you guys think blew it up here? So who blew it? Was it Deborah or Wes blew that one? What do you guys think? Cheryl took the lead with a wide dunce there. So lock in, guys. Try to get that money back, Keith. And you're both locked in. You both think Wes blew this. Cheryl, he won't know this? No, I don't think he goes to too many concerts right. lately. Right, Keith, you agree? Yeah, he looks like he's listening to uh, Al Green or something. Okay. Like <laughs> All right, let's take a look. <laughs> what band postponed their 2001 summer tour because band member A.J. McLean went into rehab? <laughs> Were they the smokers? The Smokers? The sh yeah, I'll have to go with the Smokers. It's the Backstreet Boys. Oh. He blew away to go. You both had one. 200 bucks. You're up to 500 bucks. Keith's up to 400 bucks. Deborah had the right answer. Here it is. What band postponed their 2001 summer tour because band member AJ McLean went into rehab? Backstreet Boys. Don't ask me to sing a song. Tell me why. Heartache. OK, that's perfect. <laughs> I really didn't know that song. Someone tell me how it goes. 
I didn't really know the lyrics to that song. It's someone cued me. Okay, here's the next question I asked Will and Wes. I asked both gentlemen, what musical instrument does a cellist play? <laughs> so what do you think? Who blew it? One of them did not know. Was it Will or Wes? All right, you're both locked in pretty quick on Will. Keith, you won't know this? He don't know nothing. He don't even know who he, who he is. Look okay. at it. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. What musical instrument does a cellist play? Piano. Play the pian Actually, they play the cello. Cello, piano, they all end with O. Oh. He blew you both had Will. Nice job. You each get $200 on that. Looks like Wes is the one who had that correct. It is the cello. All right, here's the last question of the round to Deborah and to Will. Who wrote Dante's Inferno? So who blew it? Was it Deborah or Will? Did not know the answer to that one. Lock in as quickly as you can, guys. You guys are both making money this round. Okay, you're both locked in. You think Will won't know, huh, Cheryl? That's a hard choice, man. Right, okay. So you think Will, you had a deduction, you think Will? Deduction, I went with Will. He didn't know a cellist, so. Who wrote Dante's Inferno? Dante. <laughs> the answer's right there. What's his last name? He's just like Madonna, he just goes by Dante. He got it right, I'm sorry, Cheryl. Will actually knew that. It looks like Deborah blew it for Keith. Watch this. Who wrote Dante's Inferno? Oh no. Do you do you have like three choices? I don't. Okay, it's... Dante's Inferno was written by the guy that wrote the It starts with an S. It starts with an S? A Schlesinger. John Schlesinger? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Dante's last name is um, Ali Giri. Okay, all right, let's recap the scores. 700 bucks for Cheryl, 800 for Keith. If you thought Dante's Inferno was hot, why don't you see how we burn this baby up for the next round? Stick around. According to the popular saying, the grass is always greener where? On the other side. Do you believe this? Oh, yeah. You don't think no, sometimes? No, 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 the grass is not greener on the other side. <laughs> Welcome back. Check your horseshoes. It's time to pick your pony. You can choose one question for the entire round. I'm trying to guess if I'll answer three questions. A correct prediction is worth $300 in the pony round. Yeah, the dunce cap is back. You can only use it once. And the player who's trailing chooses first. So that's you, Cheryl. Only down by 100 bucks. So who do you want to ride? You're going with Wes. I'm so, all right. with Wes. All right. What about you, Keith? I'm gonna have to ride with Deborah. Go with Deborah, okay. All right, Cheryl, you're only trailing by $100, so correct prediction will put you into the lead. I asked Wes, twice Brad Pitt was named the sexiest man alive by what magazine? Do you think Wes got that right or wrong? You think he got it wrong? You won't know this? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he reads too many magazines, and he might not even know who Brad Pitt is. All right, let's find out, Cheryl. Twice Brad Pitt was named the sexiest man alive by what magazine? People. Bucks there. Yeah. Right. Damn. You just All right, Keith. It. Here's your first question to Deborah. I asked her to name any two of Snow White's seven dwarfs. So do you think she could do it, Keith? You yes gotta no? get it right. Who? I mean, I'm a dwarf. I know she knows. That. <laughs> All right, let's check it out, Keith. Deborah, name any two of Snow White's seven dwarfs. It's uh, Humpty. It's Dopey and uh, it's Dopey and Sleepy. Oh, yeah. She got two. Way to go, Keith. Nice job. You're up to 1100 bucks. She said Humpty. That's not right, but bashful dog, dopey, grumpy, happy, sleepy, sneezy, and chunky B. Okay. All right. Here's the next question to Wes for you, Cheryl. What? It's our warm up guy. All right. I asked Wes, what can Roy G. Biv help you learn? All right. Cheryl got in first. Keith, you've been done. Cheryl, throw the cap up there. Keith, I'm gonna read the question again. You got five seconds on the line. If you miss this, she's only within 100 bucks of you. What can Roy G. Biv help you learn? How to do the robot. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the wrong answer, Keith. I'm sorry. She gets straight in her butt. She's up to 1,000. Good job, Cheryl. All right, now Cheryl. Cheryl, do you think Wes got it right or wrong? What do you think? You can yeah, take the lead here. Big you know, time. You know, I think you got it wrong. You, you got it wrong? I think you got it wrong. Let's find out. What can Roy G. Biv help you learn? Enunciating my vowels. Enunciating your vowels? Yeah. He helps you learn the colors of the rainbow. Roy G. Red, oh. orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. No kidding. It's a little uh, mnemonic thing. <laughs> you got it wrong. Way to go, Cheryl. Big question for you. You're up to $1,300. You made 600 bucks off that question. Okay, here's the next question to Deborah for you, Keith. You are now trailing. I asked Deborah, 
What historic event occurred on July 20th, 1969? So what do you think? Think she got it right or wrong? She's got to get it wrong. She's got everything else wrong. She's All right, wrong. let's take a look. See if you can go back. Deborah, what historic event occurred on July 20th, 1969? Well, it wasn't Kennedy. Uh, the Vietnam War ended. We landed on the moon. Oh, sorry. She got it wrong. Way to go, Keith. Back into the lead. Back and forth we go. You're up to 1400 bucks. A lot of money on the board. And you each have one more question before the wager of death. Now, Cheryl, I asked Wes, Outlaw William Bonney was better known as Billy the what? What do you think? He has got to get this He'll right. He'll get this one yeah, right? Yeah, definitely get this right. Okay, Cheryl, let's see if you can take the lead again. Outlaw William Bonney was yeah. better known as Billy, Billy the what? Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid. Who was your favorite outlaw? The Billy the Kid. No, Jesse James was, I think. Yeah, I think I like Jesse James. Billy the Kid's right. Way to go, Cheryl. $1,600 for you for the wager of death. Now, Keith, you have $1,400 right now. One question left. You can take the lead here. This I'm is big. I'm going to beat her. All right. I asked Deborah, what is the official language of Mexico? <laughs> what do you think? She's got to get that right. All right. If she gets it right, you'll take the lead. You both have a lot of money on the board. Let's see what happens. What is the official language of Mexico? Oh, that would be Espanol. Right, do, you, do you speak any Spanish? Si, sí, como no. What are you just saying there? I said yes, it's her. Say something sexy in Spanish. Hola. <laughs> Cheryl, $1,600. That's a lot of money, but Keith's got $1,700. Wow. Now, when we return, Cheryl and Keith will be making a final prediction on a question I asked to Deborah, Will, and Wes. I asked them, who is Matthew Broderick's famous wife? Check your expiration date. It's... The Wager of Death. Don't move, Bueller. 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 Welcome back. Cheryl and Keith, here's the 411. Now, during the break, each of you secretly chose a person, predicted if they would be right or wrong, and made a wager not to exceed the total. Close game, back and forth the whole time. Cheryl's got 1,600 bucks. Keith's got 1,700 bucks. We've got clutch prediction on the last question, the pony round. Now, Cheryl, if you want some money today, what would you do with it? I'm going to go do some more traveling, South nice. America. And ride with strangers. Right, OK. Keith, how about you? What would you do? I'm going to spend it very quickly. Very quick, like on very, what? Oh, what uh, whatever I can. I don't okay. care. All right, very cool. Very All right, it's the beginning of the end. One final question and one final winner. Now, here's a question I asked to Deborah, Will, and Wes. Who is Matthew Broderick's famous wife? So let's get your choices. Cheryl, you're only trailing by 100 bucks, $1,600 on your screen. How much, uh, or whose clip do you want to see? You're going with I'm Wes? I'm going with Wes. I like Wes. Good I'm guy. Going with Wes. Keith, how about you? Got a $100 lead? I got to take Will. I hope you come through in the club. You're going with Will. All right, well, nobody picked Deborah. She was a wacky woman. I love Deborah. Thanks, Deborah, for being on the show. So now, Cheryl, you're only trailing by 100 bucks. You went with Wes. Let's take a look at the clip, see if you can add to your total. Who is Matthew Broderick's famous wife? Andy McDowell. Andy McDowell. No, that's a wrong answer. Now, Cheryl, you went with Wes. He got that wrong. What did you say? You said he would get it wrong. All right, Cheryl, how much did you wager of your $1,600? You wagered $1,000. Takes you up to $2,600. She's back in the lead. Nice job, Cheryl. Now, Keith, you went with Will. Last clip of the show for you, Keith. Let's see if you can uh, predict this one correctly and win more money than Cheryl's already Let's go, Will! All right, let's check it out. Who is Matthew Broderick's famous wife? Sandra Bullock. You know, you were on the right, Sarah Jessica Parker. He, she's married. Yeah. All right, so he got it wrong. The correct answer is Sarah Jessica Parker. Now, Keith, you went with Will. He did get it wrong. What did you say he would do? You said he would get it wrong. All right, now you had $1,700. If you wagered over 900 bucks, you won, Keith. How much did you wager? We all want to know. 1650! What a huge win for Keith! Nice job, Keith Shell. Thanks for playing along. What did we learn today? Well, a cellist plays a cello, not a piano. Well, Wes and Deborah, thank you. Very funny. Thanks to my field crew, the hardest working film show business. Bye-bye. Come on over, guys. Deborah, who is Matthew Broderick's famous wife? <gasps> Matthew Broadwick is Sarah Jessica Parker's husband. <laughs>